Friends, if you have your Bible, I want to encourage you to turn to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And this is the parable of the sower. After this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and it was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what, what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, pr produce a crop. Friends, we've been working through the Gospel of Luke, and we've really sort of seen how this movement was ignited by Jesus, this movement of the kingdom of God breaking through into this world, and we've seen how Jesus has been drawing crowds through his ministry. Right? You may recall that when Jesus was up on the mountain, he came down after praying and he called his 12 disciples. And immediately after that, we saw how he preached the Sermon on the Plain. And in that moment, we saw those concentric circles. We had the 12 apostles, that center group. We had a large group of, of disciples. They had made the decision to follow Jesus. And then the outer ring where we had this, the, the crowds, there was masses that were gathered. And in this parable, we see that all of those people that have been gathering and have been listening actually fall into some different categories, right? Different soil types. And Jesus speaks about how does this kingdom seed, this word of God seed, actually, uh, what does it do when it falls into some people's lives? And so Jesus, again, tells this parable and he's explaining the strange way that the kingdom of God is breaking through into, this, into the world. This strange movement that he's kicked off. And I say strange because, you know, people had expectations at that time about what the kingdom of God was going to look like. What God's movement in the world was going to look like. What it would look like when a Messiah came to town. They had ideas. They thought that, you know, there would be a new king that would replace Herod on the throne. They had expectations about a temple renewal and maybe a new high priest coming in, one who honored and served God. They had thoughts about being freed from the Roman Empire, freed from pagan oppression and kind of the restoration of their land, the restoration of Israel once again. They saw that as part of God's covenant blessing. The Messiah would come and the Messiah would restore them in the land. And yet, friends, none of that was happening. If all the expectations that you have are not being met, then is it actually the thing you were expecting in the first place, or is it something different? Je Jesus came to say, friends, God is actually on the move. It's going to look and feel a little bit different. And so Jesus uses parables. He invites people to consider the imagery to consider the story, to see themselves 
in the language, in the brushstrokes that are formed as he goes about telling the story. He invites people to reflect and consider what God is doing and maybe the role that they have in it. And so in this one, Jesus offers the image of a farmer sowing seed. And as we've worked through Luke, we've seen kind of a little bit of what Jesus meant by some of this, right? We've seen a lot of different people bump up against this new movement that has been ignited in Jesus. We've seen the way people have responded. And in many respects, we've seen these soil types play out. You remember way back to Jesus' first sermon, he returns from wilderness temptation and he goes into the synagogue in his hometown and he reads from the prophet Isaiah and he goes down and he sits down and he says that today this has been fulfilled and you're here. Today. Now, the, the villagers were unsure what was going to happen and they got upset, right? So we have these villagers. They were unwilling to accept what he was saying. In many respects, this is the word being trampled underfoot. And this is about the birds coming in and snatching away the seed. We saw the Pharisee that invited Jesus to come and have that meal at his house as they uh, experienced Jesus. The things he was saying, the things he was doing, it kind of disrupted the Pharisee. And he distanced himself a little. Now, he invited Jesus to come in, so he's like, man, I want to hear what this rabbi has to say. I'm going to give him a fair shake. I'm going to give him a fair hearing. But Jesus didn't pass the Pharisees' tests. In many respects, this is like the seed landing in stones of prejudice, in stones of uh, presumption. And those stones kind of prevented the seed from taking root in that Pharisee's life. The third, we saw when Jesus and John were in conversation through John's disciples, and it mentioned the people of this generation, the people that didn't have time for a prophet, the people that didn't really have eyes to see what God was doing. These people are like seeds that land among thorns. The thorns come up and kind of choke out the desire to see God move in the world. But friends, we've also seen Jesus' kingdom seed fall among others. As we've walked through the Gospel of Luke, right, we saw the Gentile centurion who sent friends to Jesus to say, hey, come, and with a word, you can heal my unwell servant. We saw Levi, the tax collector, get up from his shady business dealings, leave his tax booth, and invite the teacher to come and hang out and party with him and his friends, right? To allow this kingdom seed to go forth among a whole new demographic. We saw that unnamed woman who came up behind Jesus at the banquet, who uh, kind of responded with extravagant love, wiping his crying on his feet and wiping that, her tears with, his, with her own hair, anointing Jesus' feet with her perfume, right? This response shown that she has experienced forgiveness and she's experienced this new life that has taken root deep within her. She can do nothing but respond with, exa with uh, extravagant generosity. What about the many, many more who have heard, began following, and then began living into it? And that word began bearing fruit. Disciples, the unnamed disciples we've seen, but then we saw the 12 who left their circles of life, left their family, left their careers in order to follow the rabbi. And they were anointed as apostles. They were saying, hey, you're going to be my apostles. You're going to be my official representatives to take this kingdom seed forward. Now, what's fascinating as you work through the Gospel of Luke is you see that these, even though official representatives, they're still learning. Right? There's a, in many respects, we need to see patience for that seed to take root and for fruit to eventually grow. In many respects, it's like planting a fresh new garden. Kalen went out this morning to check the Sunday school garden and to see what was, if anything was sprouting yet. She saw little sprouts, but you know it's not bearing fruit. You need some patience. The disciples are just like that. The seed fell in some good soil, 
but it didn't happen overnight, right? There was growth. There was confusion that needed to be corrected. There was a process of coming to see fruit of kind of grow and, 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 and then harvest it. But friends, in this, what we read today, what about that group of women? They heard the word. Some of them were healed by it. They reoriented their entire lives to this rabbi, this teacher, and this kingdom movement that was breaking in. They did the unthinkable in leaving their families and their duties in order to go along with them, traveling from place to place. Friends, in first century Palestine, that action would have been almost as scandalous as the unnamed woman putting her hair down and kissing Jesus' feet. They would have been seen as uh, questionable behavior. Imagine the looks they all would have received. Walking from side to side. Imagine the whispers. She's not at her, at her, at her family's anymore. She's just completely completely not responding to her needs. Doesn't she know what proper people are supposed to do? In some respects, these are presented as fertile soil. Women that break through expectations. Following Jesus in sort of a passionate response. They're putting their life, reputation, and property on the line for this Jesus movement. Questionable behavior. Friends, Jesus' kingdom seed continues to be spread. Continues to fall on the soil of people's lives. By a generous farmer. Just sowing seed all over the place. Rocky soil, thorny soil on the path. And yes, in fertile soil. The question. In the same way that Jesus told parables to invite reflection and invite people to consider how do they fit within this word picture, we, we have the same invitation. We can consider the soils. We can consider the, the farmer sowing generously in our lives and the lives of those around us and our family and our co-workers. And we can consider how has the word fallen into our lives? What resonates? Do I feel like a path where, yeah, I know seed was sown. The passion is gone. Maybe it's like the rocky soil where, yeah, I know, I know the seed was sown, sprouted up quickly, but I feel that it couldn't get any roots in my life. It's like thorny soil where there's just so much distraction. Like, I want to serve God. I know I should, but ugh, life is so fun. There's so much going on. I'm just so busy. What? Time, talent, and money to kingdom of God stuff? John, do you even know what life demands of me right now? In many respects, it can be like thorns that, are, that emerge. And then fertile soil. What would it look like for our lives to be fertile soil? Friends, rough ground can be plowed. Rocks can be picked out. Thorns can be uprooted. Every life can be fertile soil. Seed can take root. Seed can put down kind of deep roots. Seed can grow. Even in my life, right? all of our lives, seed can grow. The invitation isn't to kind of categorize you as an end all and be all. The invitation is for you to allow the parable to serve as a lens. It's a bit of a mirror to look at your own life and say, actually, where, where do I hear this word right now? Where am I at? And now what? And then now what? Maybe we've got to do some rock picking right now. Maybe we've got to do some uprooting of some thorns. Maybe we just got to give it time. Because the seed actually has fallen in fertile soil, but we're like, ah, oh, where are the sprouts? Maybe it's just about patience. Friends, it's my prayer that as we navigate life as brothers and sisters in Christ, as we navigate life as a church family, that we come alongside each other and encourage each other. That our lives would be 
further kind of uh, hewn and sowed and, and, and uh, plowed up so that that seed, that kingdom seed, can take further root in our lives. And that it would grow. That it would bear fruit. Fruit that would last. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you that you are at work in the world and that you do so, so generously. I just thank you so much that even in our own lives, rocky soil can be cleaned out, thorns can be uprooted, paths can be plowed, and it at all, even, even our starved, thirsty, dark hearts can once again be made to be fertile soil. We do pray that you would use each of the, the soil beds of our lives in order for good fruit to grow for us to be conduits of your grace and your love and your peace into a world that desperately needs more of it. We give all of this to you, and we pray that you would move in the midst of it. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.